Hi, this is Marlene at Home, and I'm Marlene. I'm the Adult Services Supervisor at the North Carroll Branch of the Carroll County Public Library. And today I thought we would talk about medicine cabinet finds. I don't know if you had a real medicine cabinet or it was a closet or shelves in a linen closet or a basket sitting on a shelf. There's all different ways that we have stored our medicine over the years or maybe in a bag of some sort. I can still even remember the aroma. If you would open the linen closet of my grandparents' house, the aroma of the medicine in their um, linen closet. Uh, I'm standing next to something that I've had for a good while my mom gave me. Um, this was our uh, next door neighbor. She was a um, spinster lady, school teacher, and um, her father had made this, and this was their medicine cabinet on the sink over their wall. And her father was also one of the men that built that house as well as the house that I grew up in that was built around the 1900s. And so um, I just, I have been keeping books and things like that in this, but I just picked up some old medicine things that my mom had or reminded me of my mom's and put it in there. Um, this is really not old, but I keep it because it's a little bit old, but not ancient, because you don't get Band-Aids very often in a metal container anymore. They're just cardboard. And so here's a plastic Band-Aid thing. I mean, this could be from the 80s even, but I put that in here. This is something that was in my mom's medicine cabinet. My mom had a medicine cabinet with a, over her sink in the bathroom that came with a house that was built like around 1900, 1901, 1901. <clears throat> and um, so turn of the century uh, house, medicine cabinet that is now at our cabin. Um, I'm gonna try and add some pictures of that if I can. Anyway, but in my mom's medicine cabinet till the day she moved out was this blue glass eyeglass washer, I guess. I We never, my sister and I never used it. I never saw my mom use it, but it was always in there. Something else that was in there um, was always Johnson's baby oil and um, Johnson's baby lotion. And of course, Johnson's baby powder. Things that we, we don't use on babies, especially the powder anymore. Uh, my mom always kept uh, Avon Skin So Soft in, in her later years. I'll talk about some earlier products too. An Avon Bubble Bath could always be found somewhere in, in my mom's house. <clears throat> about the same era as the man that made this cabinet <clears throat> was my Davis grandparents. And nearby to the medicine cabinet, my papa Davis, he would um, keep his glasses. Now, he never went to an eye doctor. I might have mentioned this before, but he would go to the local five and 10. He would stand there and try this one on, try this one on. I think I like this one, this one I think works. And so here are these that you could put over your ear. I keep them on an old desk. Or these that you could clip on, <laughs> the metal is rusting in my hand, um, over your nose or here. Do you need some fancy sunglasses for the summer? You might want to take these for the day. But anyway, these are some five and 10 cent glasses that were my pop-up Davis's. And so maybe that's what you would use that store for. Let me brush off the metal. Um, another thing that my mother always kept in her um, medicine cabinet that always made me, um, I don't know, chuckle, but just always made me stop and think. Um, that was a shaving cup is what I'm going to call it. It was kind of like a coffee mug. It had some kind of shaving cream lotion in it and you could see and right beside it would be um, a shaving brush with a handle on it. And you could see that the, bristle, the bristles of the brush, they must have put some water in here and made up some kind of a foamy kind of thing for shaving and a straight edge, straight edge, edge razor. They were always in my mother's cabinet, her medicine cabinet. My dad died when I was five and my sister was 22 months. That stayed there. I won't say almost till the very last day my mom was there, but definitely until the last five or 10 years at her house. Just something she couldn't part with of my dad's. So we were kidding that mom's medicine cabinet could be really deadly to people. And the straight edge razor was certainly one of those. Some of the things in, in that I can remember um, in my mom's medicine cabinet were things like witch hazel whatever that does. Toothpaste powder that we never used. Um, there was an old fine tooth comb and a brush 
There was Coke syrup. Now we did as kids enjoy that. When we had a um, sick stomach, an upset stomach, we would get this Coke syrup that tasted good. Versus also in the cabinet was this really yucky cough syrup prescription that you got if the Coke syrup <clears throat> or if something else didn't work, not the Coke syrup. But anyway, that yucky cough medicine, I do remember. <clears throat> Vaseline seemed to be the cure for every medical ailment. We always had a huge thing of Vaseline. Um, baby aspirin. It's kind of funny, baby aspirin you do not give to children or to teenagers. It's now for it's now for older adults. I think now they just call it low strength aspirin. But anyway, it's still um, you can still get it in that orange chewable uh, flavor. I know my husband is a heart patient has taken it. Um, <clears throat> calamine lotion that was something we couldn't live without. Um, things like um, hot, yeah. Hydrogen peroxide, um, mercure chrome, which we always loved because that one didn't hurt, but the methylate burnt like crazy and we didn't like that one. Iodine, so if you had scrapes or cuts, one of my least favorite things in that medicine cabinet was castor oil. My sister and I started coming home with different colds and stuff from school and my mother got it in her head one winter that I should take castor oil every morning before I went to school and it would just gag me. And I would say, please give me a piece of bread. I would go out the door with a piece of dry bread and munch on it on the way walking up the steep hill to my school. But like, oh, trying to get rid of the castor oil taste. Calamine lotion, use that a lot. Epsom salts, oatmeal bath. Oh, I have to laugh and I left my recipe down on the counter, but um, I'll get it for next segment. My grandma Shives uh, recipe for, I think it was called croupine, um, that she would make. My mom had it in a recipe box for if you had a bad cold, and I'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, Cornstarch, I'm not sure why that was there versus the kitchen. <clears throat> we had it in the kitchen as well. Um, cotton balls, oh, sea breeze, that was like when we were growing up, a big thing, or Noxema. Uh, ivory soap bars, weren't a lot of bar varieties too much when I was a kid. Um, there would be things like all different sizes and it, it would come in this blue paper wrapped up um, bandages like on a roll, different, different widths <laughs> or uh, an ace bandage, um, something else that would always sit nearby. My mom not only had that medicine cabinet right over the sink, but right behind you in the corner was this huge built-in cabinet from when the house was built. And that would keep like um, a hot steam vaporizer, um, extra bars of soap, all, anything, cotton balls, anything too big to go into the, the uh, medicine cabinet over the sink. Another thing would be dusting powder and a puff. You always had to have that puff for that dusting powder. Um, and I had to laugh. Back then, we did not have sunscreen. No, we would do things like put baby oil all over our skin and go out to the beach and about fry our skin and get burnt to death. Um, but sunscreen didn't seem to be existence in my growing up years. <clears throat> and we were laughing when we were talking about this. Some other um, funny things about medicine back in that day, remember when uh, as kids, we could never go swimming for 30 minutes after we ate. I don't know why, why we did or why we don't now. Um, when we were talking about old remedies and things that we used to do, um, my branch manager, Daryl, he called out of his office, he heard us talking and he said, leeches. So there's thankfully a medicine, a medical procedure that we no longer use. So um, let me come back and tell you about some other things in a moment. Here's the recipe, my grandma, my great grandma Shive's recipe for croupine. And this was something when you would get a bad cold, a cough, they would rub it like towards your neck all over here, then wrap, I don't know, it was kind of like thin cloth diaper kind of material over you. and just layers of it, and then your pajamas. And I remember as a kid just oh, trying to keep my head up like this, like give me real air. But anyway, just in case you'd like to make crap, <laughs> yeah, croupine, the recipe is two drams of menthol, one dram of camphor, a half a dram of white wax. Put in a jar and add one tablespoon of Crisco and stir. Set jar in warm water in a pan and let it come to a boil until all melts. Ha have lid screwed on tight so fumes don't escape. <laughs> I vividly remember those fumes. Lots of people in the library have been giving me ideas for this program, so many. 
I can't remember them all. And uh, some of them I've already mentioned because like things my mom had, their mom had. So some other ones that I haven't mentioned, we didn't need Vicks Vapor Rub because we had Grandma Shives uh, homemade croup uh, lotion, but Carver's liver, uh, Vicks Vapor Rub, Carter's liver pills, Geritol for iron poor blood, Goodies or BC headache powder, powdered aspirin, mm, that must taste good, eardrops, and people said their moms used to warm up the eardrops and then warm eardrops in your ear felt so good. <clears throat> Others said olive oil was used for the same thing for an earache. Several people mentioned tea tree oil, and it was like one of these cure-alls. I mean, it was for everything. Everybody thought, oh, well, we used it for stomach. Oh, we used it for this. Oh, we used it for aches and pain. It was just kind of funny. Something someone gave me once was grapevine when I thought I had the flu. It was something for horses. It said it right on the bottle. I never took it. The poor dear man dropped it off on a Sunday morning on his way to church when he heard I couldn't come to church because I had some kind of a bug, but I, I never... <laughs> I never was brave enough to take the horse medicine. But several people said they did use Dr. Biggle oil, which is horse liniment, but it's for sore muscles, pain, swelling joints, or arthritis. Others mentioned a mustard plaster. Others said bicarbonate of soda for a stomach, upset stomach. Somebody said in her family, the doctor recommended cigarettes to clear your lungs. Now that's a little different than than what we're used to. Someone else said, <clears throat> Argoyle, as I recall, it was in a small brown bottle with an eyedropper filled with some vile smelling and tasting nose drops used for decongesting. It was nasty stuff. I know it lived in our medicine cabinet. Also on the cabinet, of course, was Ben Gay, which my mother in a sleepy stupor once inadvertently mistake, mistook for toothpaste. Spectrosin ointment, known to my family as kissy medicine. Ipecac syrup, methylate, I can still feel that sting. Mum and Mitchum deodorants, Vaseline, Old Spice aftershave, that was something my dad wore. Pepsodent toothpaste, a stippet pen, Dr. Bronner's drawing salve, and the back of our medicine cabinet had a little slot used to dispose ra um, used razor blades. And I had not thought about that in years, but my mom's medicine cabinet that was over her sink, that's now over our cabin, a cabin sink, has the same thing. <clears throat> Coal tar or Mr. Bronner's salve, or Dr. Bronner's salve. Ancient lipstick. <clears throat> I'm not sure if ancient was <laughs> the name of the lipstick or if it was telling us the age of the lipstick. Jean Nate. I remember when that was very popular and I had an old country friend that would always call it, and I always think of Mary when I hear this, she would always call it Jean Nate. I want some Jean Nate instead of Jean Nate. Someone else shared a note with me that said, <clears throat> you might be interested to know that Jill of Manchester Pharmacy collects old pharmaceuticals and displays them on a shelf behind the counter. She took down and showed me her yellow metal tube of royal cocoa butter, which reminded me that a similar tube lived in my family's medicine cabinet before it took up residence in the refrigerator. And it was right beside the corn huskers lotion. So maybe you remember some of those things too. So I wanted to share those. So I'm not sure if you're gonna feel better <laughs> if you were not feeling well, or if you're gonna feel sick and you were feeling well before you heard about all these potions and things. Um, but it does make me wanna ask you what's in your medicine cabinet? And um, what were some of your family remedies? You should share your stories with your family, um, with one another, uh, and I'd love to hear them too. I thank you for joining me at Marlene at Home again this week, and I look forward to having you with us another week. Thanks again. Here is the medicine cabinet that was over my sink as a child. It came with the home that was built around 1901. And then after maybe 50, 60, no more like 70 years, then it was moved to the cabin. 
Now, the cabin, on this picture, we were doing some spring cleaning and washing the curtains and taking light fixtures down, and so it's kind of a rough look, but I wanted to include it. This mirrored medicine cabinet was over top of this ancient pedestal sink that was also in my home from 1901 until it went to the cabin in about the 70s or the 80s. I do miss the beautiful, beautiful porcelain knobs that used to be on the faucets here. Someday maybe I'll replace them. On the inside, most of the things are for my husband and I, but at the very top shelf, there's some vestiges of my mom. There's the Vaseline. There's the many kinds of gauze bandages and some sort of perfume. All the way on the lower right bottom shelf, there is a little metal container to put your used razor blades in. My husband took these pictures for me while he was up at the cabin, and surprise, I totally forgot about the medicine cabinet over top the kitchen sink, and it was a very big surprise when I opened it up, how we don't use it and it hasn't been open for a while. You'll see lots of old medications, old things in medicine cabinets that are remaining from my mom. Yes, right away on the top shelf is Epsom salt and Pepto-Bismol and Exlax, so I'm sure that's good. And some name, unnamed medical something or other, uh, band-aids in metal uh, containers, balsam till maltia. I'm not sure what that is. Some things I can't read. Gillette something heads up. Some old razor blades. All the countless sizes of gauze and bandage. The old kind of razors before disposable razors. Vicks Vapor Rub. There's that shaving brush. Another shaving brush and, and a container for shaving lotion. And I love it. looks like mothballs. And that was my mom's way of keeping mice out of the cabinet. Well, I was very surprised when my husband sent me this picture of the open kitchen medicine cabinet. So it's not just what's in your medicine cabinet, <clears throat> but I'm seeing what is also in mine. Thanks for joining me for this episode of Marlene at Home.